In this video, we're going to talk about how prokaryotes make more prokaryotes. Prokaryotes reproduce asexually. I remember when you see the letter A before a word, it typically means without. So prokaryotes do not have sex. They primarily reproduce using a process known as binary fission. And binary fission is similar to mitosis in eukaryotes. But remember that eukaryotes have a nuclear membrane and prokaryotes don't. So mitosis involves chromosomes separating and the nuclear membrane has to break down and then reform. And that doesn't have to happen in prokaryotes. So binary fission involves a chromosome uh, replicating and then the cell membrane elongating and then pinching in two. So let's look at let's take a look at a just a simple little drawing of binary fission. So if we start out with the parent cell, and this parent cell has a cell membrane. I remember that prokaryotes have a single circular chromosome that makes up their genome. So during binary fission, the first thing that's going to happen is that the chromosome is going to be copied. And it's going to make an exact copy of the original chromosome. Next, the cell membrane is going to start to elongate, and those two copies of the chromosome are start going to start to move away from each other. And I'm not really showing it here, but these chromosomes are actually attached to the cell membrane. So it's the cell membrane, as it's elongating, is actually pulling those chromosomes apart. Next, the cell membrane starts to pinch in until you ultimately have two separate daughter cells that are identical to each other and identical to the original parent cell. So that's one key thing in binary fission is that there is no genetic diversity, meaning that the offspring are identical to each other and identical to the parent cell. So if this just keeps happening and happening, you're ultimately going to end up with a whole bunch of prokaryotes that are genetically identical to each other. Now, generally speaking, genetic diversity is good. So not having gen genetic diversity can be bad. Now in a stable environment, it's fine because these cells are obviously well evolved to survive in this environment and they're reproducing. But if environmental conditions change and become stressful, it can actually, the lack of genetic diversity can be a detriment because if something happens that let's say these bacteria are susceptible to, now all of a sudden, all of them, since they're exactly the same genetically, if one is susceptible to let's say a disease or something, then they're all going to be susceptible. So even though prokaryotes reproduce asexually through binary fission with no genetic diversity, there are ways that prokaryotes do increase genetic diversity over time. And we're gonna talk about those ways on the following slides. So here are four ways that prokaryotes increase their genetic diversity. And we're going to talk about each one of these in more detail on the next several slides. So one way that prokaryotes end up having increased genetic diversity is because binary fission is a very quick process. So one of these bacterium here can reproduce potentially within a matter of minutes. So um, I've heard 20 minutes is kind of a, a time frame for binary fission to occur. So you can have one bacterium create two bacterium in 20 minutes. In 40 minutes, you have four bacterium. So remember, we've got one that divides into two, two divide to make four, four divide to make eight, 
8 divided to make 16, 32, 64. So this is exponential growth. And if we're looking at 20 minutes per arrow, then basically we've got one hour here. So after two hours, we've already gone from one bacterium to 64. So it's that's a, that's a lot of reproduction happening in a very quick amount of time. Now, during reproduction, remember that the genome has to be copied. And remember that the genome is made up of DNA and a chromosome. And that DNA is made up of guanines, cytosines, adenines, and thymines. And remember that they have complementary base pairing. So C always pairs with, I'm sorry, G always pairs with C, C pairs with G, A pairs with T, and T pairs with A. Now, sometimes errors occur. So if the original sequence, let's say, is G, G, C, A, T, T, C, the complementary sequence should be C, C, G, T, A, A, G. But mistakes happen, right? So let's say that instead of this adenine showing up here, let's say that instead we have a cytosine that gets put there. That is a genetic mutation. So a, a mutation is just a change in DNA. Now remember, um, mutations, we often think of them as being bad, but they're not always bad. Some mutations are neutral, which means that they don't really affect the organism positively or negatively. Some of them are, are negative and might make the organism more likely to die or more susceptible to disease, but there are also some that are positive and they might actually give that bacterium a survival advantage. Another way prokaryotes increase their genetic diversity is that they're kind of messy when it comes to their DNA. So there might be some prokaryotes out there and let's say they've got their, they've got their um, chromosome and then maybe they've got some little plasmids. So remember, plasmids are these little accessory rings of DNA that are not part of the main genome, but they might have genes on them that help give the prokaryote some sort of survival advantage. Now, as this bacterium is in its environment, sometimes it just leaves some DNA out in the environment. And a different bacterium, such as this one over here, might pick up some of those plasmids or little pieces of DNA and incorporate it into their genome. And now they have altered their original genome. Another way prokaryotes might have an increase in their genetic diversity is through a process known as transduction. And if you recall, in the viruses video, we talked about these bacteriophages, which are viruses that infect bacteria. And so they are carrying DNA around with them. And as they inject that DNA into the host cell, so once again, this is the bacteriophage here, and this is the prokaryote here. So as they're injecting that DNA into the host cell, that DNA might get incorporated into the host cell's DNA. And now we have a change in that DNA sequence from the original. And yet another way that prokaryotes increase their genetic diversity is through a process known as conjugation. When we talked about the morphology or the structure of prokaryotes and DNA, we talked about these things called a pilus. Plural is pili. And sometimes they're actually called a sex pilus or pilus. And that's because um, th this pilus is basically a little cellular extension 
that these two bacteria can essentially reach out and connect to each other. And then one bacterium or one prokaryote can essentially give the connected prokaryote some genetic information, usually in the form of plasmids, so these little accessory rings of DNA. So in conclusion, prokaryotes reproduce asexually via binary fission. The binary fission produces clones, which means that they are genetically identical to each other, so no genetic diversity. So no genetic diversity occurs. And this is fine, so OK, when conditions are stable. But in reality, environmental conditions are never really all that stable. So even though prokaryotes produce asexually, they have ways to increase their genetic diversity. So to increase genetic diversity, which is generally considered a good thing, they um, have mutations, just spontaneous mutations that happen during this rapid binary fission transformation transduction and conjugation now these are not reproductive strategies so this is not reproduction meaning that one cell is not dividing to make two cells. This is something that happens to individual cells. But once those genetic um, changes are in a cell, when that cell then goes through binary fission, that change is going to occur in all of the offspring. So for example, let's say you've got two cells here, two prokaryotes with their genome. And let's say that one of them has part of its genome altered due to one of these processes here. Now, when this cell goes through binary fission, it's going to make copies of the original cell. But this one that has now been changed, its offspring are going to have the varied genetic code. And so now this population is made up of some bacteria that have the original information and some bacteria that now have this potential genetic advantage. And this can happen over and over again. So we could ultimately from, you know, one original cell we could ultimately end up with cells with all different types of genetic differences associated with them. So as you can see, I'm kind of drawing some um, variations here. So for example, this cell has the blue and the green are just different genetic variants that have been, you know, kind of inserted into the genome. And it's different from the second one, which maybe just has the green gene that I kind of highlighted. And then this one is different from the others because it has the blue genetic change and the uh, yellow um, genetic change.